Are you guys here? Hi. Can you see me? Yes, yes we can see you. Yes, Hello. Can. Oh, yes. Hello. How are you? Hey, how, how are you? you? Um, I was worried I went to the wrong, I was worried that I went to the wrong meeting. And I oh. thought, I thought, oh dear, where have I gone? What have I done? I don't. Yeah. No. Nope. What it, part of the world are you in? The People's Republic of Massachusetts. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sounds <laughs> as exciting as Ohio. Ohio's nice. Ohio's nice, though. No. I mean, years ago, for eight years ago, it is. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're just, we're just. I don't know. We're just behind the times over here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we, we actually see all the seasons in a week, which are... Which we really do. Yeah. That sounds like Massachusetts. We're a bit yeah. like it as well. If they say if you don't like the weather, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so one of those where it could snow tomorrow. And it, well, it was not almost 90 degrees yesterday. Right. And then it, it dropped October. over. And they said we're going to have like a 47 degree swing between yeah. now and Sunday. Like it's going to be like yeah, 40 degrees and then it's going to, yeah. And yeah. That, that's wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, that's fast. That's fast. Yeah. Do you guys know how to like split the screen for the recording? Yeah. Yes. If you Do look, I there should be, um, a uh, thing where um, it shows you like your view and if you hit it and it'll put side by side. Like our screen right now, you're you're on one side and we're on the other. Okay, so There's we, a have, we have English captions, good. Okay. I have the participants. Okay, and okay. here's the chat. Okay. It's usually on the side that you, where you're looking at, like if you see us, on the side, there'll be three little icons, and there'll be one where it looks like um, a square with it. It'll look like a bunch of dots. Oh, if yeah. you click that, it'll so just be kind of, yeah, it'll look like we're side to six, side. Is it six, six or nine? I think it's nine. Nine. I don't nine. have that on mine. <clears throat> I think okay. I have, I think it's because I have like the low end of Zoom. That's okay. Uh, <clears throat> That's okay. okay. It's all right. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like later, viewers will go. Yeah, Lean, it's right there on your. I can see. <laughs> you know, you are so dippy. Can uh, you figure welcome. this out? Yeah. No, yeah. I can't. I can't. Welcome. Don't don't trust welcome. me with your love relationship advice either. If I can't figure out a screen. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys so much for coming. And so uh -huh. for people for the viewers who don't know, my name is Helena Roman. I'm a relationship coach and strategist helping you go from casual to committed. And today's guests are Lean Sherry to bona fide twin flames in a harmonious union. So <clears throat> there was a couple of questions that I wanted to go ahead and, and ask, did you guys want to introduce yourself and, and tell the viewers or listeners what you guys do? Because you help a lot of twin flames out there. Mm. Yeah. Whether they're in union or not in union, we help them see themselves in a clearer way to understand what's happening in the connection. Um, we actually just celebrated our ninth eight, wedding. Yeah, but we're ninth, 18 years. 18 years. 18 years to yeah, get but our here. ninth wedding. But our I ninth saw wedding. that last night. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Big. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so we, um, we talk to people all over the world um, of really about connection. Right. Um, and what else do we do? It's, it's, what else do we do? We talk we, to people. We, we connect you back to your there pain. There it is. There it is. Because the pain yeah. of this connection is the most illusionary space you're in. When this connection, when it first finds you, you, you feel this really blissful feeling. Right. But shortly thereafter, it starts to turn directions and you're not quite sure why that happened we walk you through why that happened um our connection has been so pure i mean we've been through we've had everything thrown at us oh. you know everything that will oh, separate you everything that will destroy you everything that you could possibly imagine but there was a feeling between us that we both were connected to and we never really understood how to grow that 
because of some things that had happened to us previously. So that was in, impacting why we weren't able to really fully get the connection because it's not a connection you can find outside of yourself. It's a connection you find inside of yourself. So we, we help people find that now. Yes. We help people who are just starting this journey, what we call the twin flame journey. Mm -hmm. um, and they're so confused and they're so lost and they can't figure it out because it's a hot mess. Right. And, and that's what we do when really, really, it's not really even about the other person. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. always about you. We have a program called Root Camp and we really show you and connect you to why you act and react the way you do. Like right? dealing with those like, trigger points. Man, mm -hmm. like, why do I do that? Why do I act like that? Right? What, what is that? And Lee here can go all the way back and show you exactly why you do that. It's amazing. It's all connected. Yeah. All of it. Um, and that's the big thing. You know, it was interesting because we were just talking, we were looking over what we wanted to be able to answer in a very simple way for somebody who comes across and, and finds the information regarding, you know, this spiritual or this connection that just seems to not really have an answer. Mm -hmm. Well, you're the answer. You just yeah. don't see that. You think the answer is going to be what somebody else gives you. And that's where it becomes a very blurry mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, what we do is we need to connect you back to you to understand why the connection is doing these things. Because you've already repeated what you're repeating again. And it's, it's really powerful and beautiful when you can actually sit back in that feeling and actually let others connect to that feeling with you, you'll be surprised at how that changes connection. It changes the feeling and it changes the way you understand it and respond too, I imagine. Oh yeah. Like um, the other night, th this, our connection is so deep that she doesn't experience things without me. So if she has a massive headache, it affects me. We're all walking around like that. We don't realize it. And that's how powerful this connection is. And speaking of a health situation, I want to ask you guys a question about Sherry, about how you really help Sherry. And this is kind of groundbreaking, what I call like really bleeding edge, not cutting edge, but bleeding edge information, mm -hmm. because not a lot of people are aware of it, the way it works, the connection works and the benefits of being connected and connecting with others. But quick definition, what is the definition of the twin flame? Because there, there will be a few, a few listeners that have never heard of twin flame and they're going connection. Sounds great. Where do I get that? <laughs> so what is, what is your definition of a twin flame? Wow. So I'm going to start, <laughs> I'm gonna start and we're going to try to make this as simple as possible. Sim Absolutely. Simplicity. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a feeling. But it's, it's most definitely your raw vulnerability, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what it is. Now, what's happening is some human came up with that term, right? Some right. human came up with that, just like some human came up with the term love, right? <laughs> it, 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 whatever, it, it doesn't describe, it doesn't describe the feeling. It just points to the feeling, right? So connection right? Um, my personal opinion, we have, we have many, many soulmates. We connect to, we, sometimes it's best friends and sometimes it's lovers and relationships, right? And those work out just beautifully. Um, and, you know, there's, there's, there's speed bumps in every type of relationship, but um, this is a, this comes from a spiritual place inside of you that notices that spiritual place and someone else, right? I'll, I'll kind of give you a little- Is that the recognition? It is. It that's is. A good way to, Very that's good. That's a good way to yes. put that. Yeah. So when I was little, right? I'm playing with Barbies and Ken and you know, doing all those things. Now everybody knows what that is because it's a movie. <laughs> but I, if I had said it like 10 years ago, it was him. <laughs> right? But um, when I was little, I had this, this dream inside of me. It wasn't in my head. It was inside of me right out there 
somewhere is my big love. A lot of, a lot of kids would be like, I'll have, I'll have a husband one day, right? That wasn't it for me. One day out there, I'll have a big love. It wasn't a husband. It wasn't a boyfriend. It was a big love, right? In me. And the relationships that I was in, I, 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 as a teenager, I knew that I, you know, I was, I was where I was supposed to be, but that wasn't my big love. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. My first marriage, I knew that that's where I was supposed to be. I knew even when I was walking down the aisle, that's where I was supposed to be. Right. But I also knew he wasn't my big love. Right. Um, That says a lot. I actually had the same experience when I got married. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and it didn't take away any love for that person or I mean we were married for 13 years we had three kids and we had a we had a great divorce um and so it it, I knew I knew that that wasn't my big love so when and and I went through a few more relationships and one was even probably about as perfect as it could get right it was just it just flowed it was amazing you know, and in the in the breakup wasn't bad, but it had to be because of a distance he moved, and um, he wanted me to come with with my kids. But there was a conflict there with family, so I decided not to, which, you know, sent me on and in my journey. When I met Lee, mm-hmm. something awakened in me. Something was different. I didn't look at him as a husband or a future boyfriend or whatever. It 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 felt differently. Like I questioned. It was the first time I ever questioned. Why is this box that I have on this big love? Why is the top coming off? Right? Why do I feel the top coming off? Um, and then in getting to know him and realizing there's no way we will ever be together. <laughs> Absolutely not. Right? No way. Was there also a sense of this is too good to be true? Because I remember when my first marriage, I was the same way. I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. Yep. I love this man, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's not. Yes. Big love. And then I met my twin flame and I'm like. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was rough. It was rough. It was rocky. We've got a playlist on our YouTube channel that, that really we start from day one when we met and how it felt and everything we've been through. There's 29 videos of our of our story right and what we went through and we faced death even Mm -hmm. and the connection really kept it alive yeah the it was the connection now there are obviously signs that we're going to get into all that um but i'm I'm just going to analogize it as the big connection yeah the one that I'm connected to. Do we have to be sitting here together? We do not. Mm-hmm. We do not. We want to be sitting here together. We love sitting here together, right? She's hot. But it, it's not a have to, right? It's not a tell all be all. Mm-hmm. It's it's not, mm-hmm. right? Um, you have to be balanced in here, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's not an everyday thing. There's a lot of imbalance that goes on, but he when i'm when i'm up here you know he balances me Mm -hmm. right and when i'm way down here then he'll bring me back up right there is you know there's always some type of head mind noise that goes on right we're human beings the head the head makes the rules and the head shouldn't right we allow that to happen we allow ourselves to live in our minds Twin flame connection is not in your mind. It is in your soul. Mm-hmm. And Which that sets it apart from a, another kind of dating relationship or a, yeah. a type of marriage. And I know that the two of you, and thank you for that, Sherry, the two of you have experienced certain levels of healing that maybe other people or other twin flames might not have experienced. I was hoping maybe you could share a little about that because as I, as I understand it, you were very sick and Lee shared his energy with you in such a way that it affected in a good way, your ability to heal. Do you it, it, it was quite, it was quite miraculous, honestly. 
Um, yes, I, we, um, we came into, we, we married and we did the paperwork in nine years ago. We met 18 years ago. <laughs> okay. So it took us a minute to figure all that out. Right. Nine years of running. And yeah, nine years of running. And then, right. We, 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 we get it together and it, it's beautiful. Right. And we found what we thought, you know, was our, was our dream life, our dream home. And we started to feel really content in that. Right. Yeah. And I started getting sick and I, I found out that I had stage four cirrhosis of the liver. And I was surprised because that's how my father died. My father was an alcoholic and I was not. So I, I, I couldn't figure out, you know, what it, what it was, but um, it progressed. It progressed over a period of two years and to the point where I went into hospice care and I was in my final days. Yeah. And most people, uh, when they hear the word hospice, they think, yeah. And did yeah. care, palliative care yeah. only kind of a thing. And you were there. You were. It, it was done. It was done. Yeah, it was done. I was in, I was definitely in hospice care. Now I was preparing my, I had to prepare my mind because my, you don't have to prepare your soul for things like that. I, I had to prepare my mind for death because what they were telling me is it was, it was coming and it was coming very soon. And I had no biological family support. There were a couple, um, you know, my daughter, my niece and my, my mother, it, you know, there was, there was a few, but, um, but not, I, I didn't have a support system. Like I always thought I would when I was younger, like if I ever got in a wreck or a car accident, I'd have my family around me. And that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. um, Lee was, and his brother and my son and my ex-husband were my rocks. They were, they were all surrounding me when I was in hospice care. And um, he never entertained the thought that I was dying he never entertained the thought and I was preparing myself because I because I, I could phys physically feel it I could physically feel my organs shutting down they was they wasn't working any, anymore I had to you know I was on IV I had a catheter they were trying to feed me all these opiates and I just didn't want them and um yeah it, it was a mess there were times when I couldn't even feel I was in so much pain and I know that he released some of that in me. I know that when he sat next to me, I could feel the pain dissipate, but I knew it was going into him and I didn't want that. You didn't give it to us. I didn't want him to feel that. It was what horrible. You know? it's so, crazy. so there were times when I was just ready to close my eyes and, and I'm not even going to lie. There were probably 10, 10 consecutive mornings that I woke up upset. Like why in the hell did I wake up? Like, why am I waking up? Why? I don't want to wake up. This is horrible. It's painful. My whole that must have been a horrible realization every morning. You're, you're every morning. Just fuck. Oh, it's okay. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay. This is not a family show. You're, you're good. Just, yeah, this is not. This it was not like that. You know, I would wake up and, and, and feel tears running out of my eyes because I couldn't, I couldn't speak and I couldn't think. And I was upset because I was awake. And when I, when I, you know, your conscious brain wakes up first, right? You wake up first in your, in your brain. And then it, then it does something to, to your eyes. And then you wake up, right? It does something to you, you wake up. But in that period before my eyes woke up, you know, before I could speak, there's that period of, damn it, I'm going to wake up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to wake up again today. And I, and I was, and I would cry because I didn't want to go through that a whole other day, but then found that it was sometimes easier. Sometimes I was literally out of my mind because the ammonia was so, um, so much in my brain um, because my liver wasn't working at all. My bladder wasn't working. I, I, I was, I was a mess. He sustained me. He made sure he brought me my medicines whenever I needed them. He still does my medication. He still does my medication every morning and every night. Um, he changed my IVs. Uh, they taught him how to do that. They they showed him, and he and he he emptied he emptied my drain sacks. He emptied like everything he did for me kept me here. Now let's hear the other side, <laughs> right? Because there's got to be two sides. A twin flame is the truth about 
yin and yang. You just don't see it yet because you're stuck in either one. So in 2020, summer 2020, when there was progression in her illness, every time I went to dream, I was in the middle of the ocean drowning. And I kept going, why do I keep dreaming this? And the ocean created a boat made out of water. And I climbed up in it and I said, okay, this is weird. I've had, I've had, we've had dreams throughout our entire connection. And most of those dreams were so powerful and so magical, but this particular dream was way different, but was just the same energy. And I went, okay, where am I? And water turned into the shape of Bruce Lee. And I went, this is new because he was my childhood hero. I didn't realize it, but maybe that's the shape that the connection needed to take. And I was like, where are we going? He says, well, maybe the better question is, where are you? And I said, well, we're Sherry. He goes, this is Sherry. And I said, what is all this? He says, the ocean, Sherry. And I went, the ocean? And I kept telling her, I would wake up and I'd go, okay, I'm going through some kind of dream journey and I don't know where it's taking me, but I know that I'm connected to you in it. Well, I kept dreaming and it kept being pointed to the coast of Chile, where the Atlantic and the Pacific meet, where the connection originated from. And I went, huh, those two bodies of water actually don't change their shape, don't change their form, but they connect, which was telling me that my cells could merge with her cells if I believed that we were both oceans. So I went through all kinds of different dreams. And I remember, I remember distinctly having a long conversation with Kay Moon, the astrologer, and saying, I don't understand these dreams and what they're trying to tell me, but I believe I can stay connected to her because what my belief system was at that time was that we're never going to be apart. So if she's going, I'm going with her. Or she's going to stay here with me if I believe she's going to stay here with me. So I went, okay, which one am I going to put power into? And it was funny because he told me to punch the water. And I said, huh? Punch the water. And I punched the water. And it became very vulnerable and just went around my hands. And then when I opened my hand, all of the water was going in me. And I was like, wow. So when I would go to sleep at night, I would feel like I was pulling her into my water. And everything that was in me was now her. And I actually started becoming both of us. It was, it was the way that this connection was meant to be. And I was being shown that before we had the ability to speak, communicate through words, communicate through the different languages across our planet, when humans came together, it was based on a feeling that brought them together. And they could live as long as they stayed together. Not really ever communicating like we do, but communicating like we do. We've learned to cut that off. If you really look at what this connection was here to bring back, it was here to bring back connection. Because if you look across the world, you just don't see it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I kept going, we're the key. And then you kept saying, no, we're the door. And I said, we're the key. And she goes, well, put your key in my door. <laughs> and I was like, okay, and I did that. It, it, yeah. it, 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 felt, <laughs> it felt amazing, <laughs> but it felt blissful. Like um, we were stuck in this bliss, but it was very painful, right? And that's where the disease was. Mm -hmm. So when she would have that great pain, even if we were sleeping, I was staying connected to her so she couldn't leave. And she kept waking up pissed off, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going, oh, hey, as long as you're mad, you're still here. <laughs> I was like, yeah, if it's... that's what it's going to take. But then we found um, we had just enough time. But this connection works in very mysterious ways. We kept dreaming of this beautiful home. We knew when we found it. But that was part of the path to save her life. That wasn't the part of the path of our connection. 
because we now see a dream of something different and we're going, huh? Oh. Right. Yeah. And we didn't, exactly we didn't know it. how to do, you know, you got to follow the yellow brick road. Mm-hmm. You're just not following the yellow brick road. Cause you yeah, don't know. It is, it is definitely a yellow brick road. And I, when you said ocean, because you and I had had this discussion about how impactful sharing your message could be with others. And when you said ocean just now, it reminded me, my shaman friend always says, we are all drops in the same ocean. We're all yeah. going the same mm-hmm. direction most of the time. You and I'm going, to, I'm going to one up, I'm going to one up that. Okay. <laughs> we, are, gonna one up. we are all oceans not realizing we're bodies of water that connect. Oh, that that is good. So, that so makes sense. The more we realize that, the more we can change and bring back connection that we already have. So that kind of answers the question, mm-hmm. does everybody have a twin flame? Everybody's a body of an ocean. Everybody is an ocean. That part of their ocean can be the top, which is very turbulent and rough and hard, or if they let themselves sink down deep where the connection actually originated, they'll actually experience the connection. The only thing that really, that we realize that the purpose of everything that we've gone through is to bring people back to connection means you have to bring them back to their vulnerability, their pain, because the shape of your pain is what's pushing this connection away from you. Because you don't, it's not that you don't believe in connection, you just don't believe connection's available to you. Right, and that's that's kind of a roadblock a lot of people experience. They, yeah. they know it's there, they just don't believe that it's possible for them to experience that connection. Or, yeah, and, or they're just stuck in their everyday human lives mm-hmm. and their everyday human existence or a belief system that was instilled in them right? That keeps them from heading in the spiritual direction, right? And, and, and following, following the universe and what, what spirit is guiding you to do. Now, um, me, me and my mother had had, I had, I was, I was so full of ammonia. I said a lot of harsh things to a lot of people didn't even know who Lee was at times, but me and my mother had had falling out a couple months before while I was in hospice care, but, um, in the, or I was still in palliative care, but getting ready to move to hospice care. We had had a fall out. We had talked in a couple months. Um, I, you know, I probably said something that, or probably said the truth and she couldn't handle it. But, um, but uh, I was, I was within a couple days and I knew that I knew that I was within a couple days because they had told me maybe, maybe not through the weekend. And, but nevertheless, it was a Friday and, uh, I needed to, I needed to clear that, um, not for me, but really for her, because I knew that I was about to pass. So I called her up and had her over. My, my daughter came with her and we just hashed it out. I'm laying on the couch in an IV, just hashing it out with my mom and going through my childhood and, and explaining to her what hurt, what didn't and what she did. Right. The whole, the whole thing, mm-hmm. laying it all out because what do I have to lose? Right. Um, but we ironed everything out. Uh, we worked everything out. And as the universe would have it, um, me and my mother and my daughter were just joking around having a, a regular conversation, right? Um, we had went to the store with your brother. You and you and your brother had left and went to the store. And as I was talking with my mother, and I, after all of that negative energy had cleared, the phone rang. And it was, um, it was the surgeon who, um, who I talked to before he was calling me from Columbus. He was at a, some type of game, but he told me that he had a liver for me. And if, if I wanted to accept it and, um, I was, I was just, I was in all right. I was like, it's happening. This is happening. And, and I was, I was stunned and he told me just to hang loose and wait for the coordinator to call and they'll tell me what time to be up there. And it was, it was within uh, three or four hours. So Lee came home and I'm, I'm a mess and we're all crying and I'm celebrating and 
And I told him that I got a liver. I had already got a liver before, but then I went all the way to the hospital and they had turned me down because there was a test result that wasn't back yet. So we had to drive all the way home. It was a mess. But and so I really wasn't that optimistic. We went to the hospital. I wasn't that optimistic. But as things progressed with with, uh, you know, all the doctors coming in and talking to me and telling me, hey, you're going to be transplanted about two thirty in the morning. And I I wasn't processing. I was just in all the of where I was. It was all just a huge blur where I was, what I was doing and and feeling like I'm, I know I'm on the brink of death and could this surgery work? I mean, how, how are they going to put up somebody else's organ in me and just, you know what I mean? Pretend like it's going to work. Like a car like, battery. Oh. <laughs> right. Right. So then, um, you know, I, I didn't remember anything for a couple of days because I stayed asleep. They had a little bit of problem with my surgery and they had to go back in and do some other work. And I woke up on Sunday right? Or it's Monday. I woke up on Monday and I felt brand new. I felt my body come alive. I felt things. I had to, I had to pee and I hadn't felt that urge in months. I'm like, I have to pee. And they're like, okay, you got a catheter. In. No, <laughs> no, I, I'm what I want to go. <laughs> but that had to amazing the things you take for granted. It really right? is. And I, I could think clearly where that hadn't been a thing in a long time because of all the ammonia in my brain, but I could think clearly. I, I was, I could see, I could see mm. from my soul and from my eyes. It was, it was absolutely miraculous. And so can I give you guys the viewpoint, the other side? Yes. <laughs> Our meeting is going to end in like six minutes, I think. Oh, no. Oh. Then yeah. I'll make this. Real, I'll make this real simple. We I'll talk so much. Sorry. Yeah. We, we can we can make this a part one of a series. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think that would be great because listeners right now are like, "There's more." <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let let me clarify and point you to some things she said so you can clearly see it and what the connection is doing. The connection needed to destroy her belief system of her masculine. Okay. So when she opened up to her mom to start healing feminine to feminine energy, mm -hmm. it opened doors in the universe for liver to come through. But I had to not be present for that because I was carrying the masculine she was connecting with. So she wouldn't lose me. She couldn't lose herself. So she started healing her feminine. So what we watched was a rebirth of her feminine energy because primarily through our connection as twin flames, She's been the masculine, forcing me into a feminine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what this did was destroy that and reset it all at the same time. So when she woke up, that feminine connection that had been burned and been wounded, and she finally opened up and thought was for her mother, was more for her. Mm -hmm. And it opened up something in her for that liver to come through. And it was a young liver, so the young energy of that little girl in there that didn't have her masculine energy and connection finally has masculine energy in her connection. So the two oceans continue to mm -hmm. do what they were supposed to. Yeah. So if you look at it, she is back now. And if you ask her, does she feel more feminine now than she ever has? She, her the, answer would be... The physical, the, even, even the outward even the physical, the, the human aspect, I, I, I've got these pictures even because I would take pictures of my closet and it was literally all black, black, everything, black shirts, black sweaters, black. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't catch me dead in a dress it's so much that my, my, a friend of mine would always say, well, I'm going to bury you in a pink dress because there's just no way you would ever wear a pink dress. I've got a pink dress in my closets full of dresses. I wear dresses nearly every day. Um, I wouldn't, you wouldn't caught me dead wearing a dress before my transplant. Um, so much physical stuff. I mean, I, I didn't have one tattoo nope. before transplant. <laughs> <laughs> Not one. Um, but yeah, the, the, it, it, it really brought out my feminine energy mm -hmm. a lot. Yes. And, uh, it was, it was, it was a beautiful, so it, painful, loving experience. So what I have now is the girl that lost 
the man that she was connected to, she's now starting to realize she has gained the masculine she's connected to through what she told herself she lost. Mm -hmm. On my side of it, I got to keep a woman I'm connected to because I lost a woman I'm connected to, which healed my masculine. So even what we're sharing here, it goes far deeper mm -hmm. than any of the information you're going to find out there. Yeah. Because the answers to this connection isn't out here. It's in you. Yeah. yeah. And that's the mistake that a lot of people, a lot of people make. They go on the internet and they're, they're in love and, and for whatever reason they feel mm -hmm. down and because maybe their, their partner is blocked them, goes to them, run away, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so then they go on the internet and they sometimes land on places like Quora, where I landed mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> for a long time. And then, you know, they they read things and it it may or may not be accurate, you know? Yeah. And so this it's super scary. rare, it's intense scary. connection, mm -hmm. people don't quite understand it. And that's why I'm so glad that you guys could be here today to kind of share the, I guess you would say the the in, one of the more intense stories about how this connection is real. It's very beneficial oh, and yes. it's incredibly it's real. A lot of people- And, and there's a lot of things out there that say, oh, you know, there's only 144,000. Not everybody's feeling me. There are no twin flames here. And you know what the issue with that is, is these are the same kinds of energies that blocked you from connection to begin with. Right. And they're trying to fight you in this and make sure you don't have it because they don't have it. And yeah. this is where it's changed into more of a mind thing, where this is a feeling thing. And you don't see that your mind is dominating your own feelings. Yeah. So we actually, Sherry developed the program root camp um, and that birthed a bunch of different things that we're doing. Like tonight, we're doing a vulnerability class. Mm -hmm. And really what that vulnerability class is about the source of connection. You cannot have this connection without vulnerability. So if you're not looking for that, you're not, you're nowhere near, you're the runner. You just don't see it. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people are in one dynamic. They're the yin. They, they're, they think they're the yin. They're actually the yang runner chaser. You know, when I first started, you know, getting into the twin flame writing, I was like, oh yeah, there's only 140,000 of us. And I don't know. I don't remember who came up with that. Think, and, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is how it is. Excuse me. And then I found out more information. And a lot of the answers, you're right, are in you. A lot of times you'll look elsewhere, you'll look out there, but the answers, the truth is really truly in you. Can it's in, it's in what you feel. Is there a way that we could do like a part two? I know you guys have a coming up. Could, can, sure. we, can we do like same time next week for part two? And it can sure, be sure. a series. Yeah. If it goes to three or four, that's okay. These are going hey, to my podcast. We're, we're not, we're it not. Could. We're here to bring more people into connection, not keep them from, from it. it. Yeah. So what we found is we've been we've been lost the way the connection got lost. Mm -hmm. And the connection is kind of giving us strength and and putting us in different spaces. So the right, we don't want to say the right information gets to you, the right feeling finds you. Because the feeling is what the connection awoken. Mm -hmm. So you got to go towards what the feeling is, not what the things that are keeping you in your head are. Listen to your feelings. Listen to the whispers well, of your heart. Trust what you feel. feel not what you hear. Or think. Okay. Your thinking has a pre-programmed thing that you're just not paying attention to yet. If I said, Elena, are your mother and father together? How long, how long were they together? Yeah, he, yeah, he's passed. Yeah. So as you see, your head is shaking no automatic. So mm -hmm. your belief system that people you're connected to stay together is what's keeping you from your connection. Mm -hmm. It's that simple, but it goes deeper than that. You have feelings around that. Those feelings can be connected to and changed. In the meantime, people can go to our YouTube channel and, and, and on our playlist, I mean, we've got, I don't know how many videos we got. I, I, 400. 400 and stuff. But if you go to our playlist and you see our journey, that's how we met, mm -hmm. what happened when we met, You'll see. what we saw, the blue orbs, all those things. Um, 
than the pain. We talk about signs. We talk about synchronicities. We talk about how you know. We talk 